The Humble Corner. A boundary setter, a flag in the ground, and somewhere, if you can get it right, that can be the difference between three points and none. Since the start of last season, Arsenal has scored the most goals from corners in the entire league with 16. And since finding out by reading this book by Tifo that 2% of corners end up in goals, that's actually pretty impressive. Set pieces are a slightly mythical beast, historically often relegated to the last five minutes of a training session or made out to be far more simple than they actually are. I remember Liverpool being laughed at for having a specialist throw-in coach a few years back, but now the idea of a specialist throw-in, corner, ball striking, how to blow your nose coach is really nothing to be laughed at. In a world where our manager will buy a dog for the training ground and call it win to get a percentage of a percentage of an advantage, we should probably collectively try and pay a bit more attention to them, myself included. I don't pretend in any way to be a set piece expert, but having watched the attacking corners against Everton at Goodison Park over and over, I'm going to try and explain from a fan perspective what I think is happening on Arsenal's attacking corners. Before we do that, just quickly, this is going to be nothing to do with time or time delaying. Gary Neville on Sky's commentary was going heavy on the length of time it took Arsenal to take our corners on Sunday, saying we were delaying to the point that we might get carded, and Sky were posting clips on social media with timers on suggesting that we were taking an abnormally long time, but there's just no truth in that. If you check the numbers provided by Opta, a 26 second margin would actually surpass the quickest delay time between the corner being awarded and the taking of it when compared to the average times of all Premier League teams last year. I don't blame Gary Neville as I'm sure he doesn't have niche corner data to hand when he's commentating, but it just shows that narratives can quickly get out of hand. As I've spoken about a few times on this channel, I think Arsenal are attempting to become more unpredictable in their play this season. Arteta has spoken about plan A1, A2, A3, fascinatingly revealed he's wanted to switch up his goalkeepers to change styles mid-game before, and spoke candidly about wanting two players in every position to be able to respond to the demands of each opposition, and asked different questions. As we move further and further away from our obvious first 11, one predominant idea style of last season, towards more squad-based, chameleon ball. That's my trademark. You can't have that. Against Everton, when their defensive line pushed up after Martinelli's departure, we started lofting balls in behind. When we needed to shut the game down, we saw an Oscar-worthy performance from Gabriel Jesus in the Housery department, and when our corners weren't working, we adapted too. Broadly, as I see it, we have two predominant tactics on our attacking corners in order to create space for an Arsenal player to have a shot. The screen and the decoy run. These played out in different ways across the game. When we played Manchester United, lots was made of Gabriel's block to make space for Declan Rice in the dying embers. Was it a foul? Was it not? What I can tell you is it was a screen. A screen, if you're unfamiliar, is a blocking move by an offensive player in which they stand behind or beside a defender in order to free a teammate to either shoot or pass or drive in to score. It's a common technique in other sports, particularly the NBA, where defensive players create space for their teammates by using their body to occupy defenders. It's less common in football, but from corners with more jostling and players closer together in close contact, you can obviously get away with a bit more. As we saw, Gabriel doesn't get away with it in open play and received a yellow card for blocking Beto's path on Sunday, but in the box, you can do a bit more standing in someone's way. A decoy run perhaps needs less explanation, but it's important to say that these principles don't just apply to the match we're looking at today. Without Tomiyasu's run across the box as the ball aimed for the back post against United, as well as Gabriel's screen, would Rice have had the space to fire at home? Arsenal had 11 corners against Everton on Sunday, 8 in the second half and 3 in the first. The first two came in the 3rd and ninth minute, and on those, Arsenal were attempting to create space at the back post. Let's look at the first one first. The players congregate at the back post initially, occupying the Everton defenders. As the corner is about to be taken, they rush into the six-yard box to make the decoy runs. The reason it's a decoy is because though the ball may land favourably in a central zone, the real target is the back post to isolate Nketiah, who can have a tap-in, who you can see there has some space in the box to run into. Unfortunately, Everton were wise to it from the start and man-marked Nketiah. Saka's delivery was off regardless and Everton got it away, but if it was a better delivery, Rice may have jumped into action as the screen in that situation to give Nketiah a split second to get a shot away had he not been marked. On the second attacking corner in the ninth minute, we actually do succeed in getting it to the back post from another Saka inswinger from the right. Everton do a better job of not getting sucked into the decoy runs and you can see Nketiah and Gabriel then do act as the screen on Branthwaite and Young as the delivery reaches the back post to create space for Martinelli this time. It's just too wide. By this point, it's clear that going to the back post isn't working and we even get a great shot of Ashley Young saying essentially there are attacking the back post. Let's defend it. Everton were wise to what we were doing and I imagine had scouted it quite extensively. The exciting part 
is what happened next. We immediately went short from the next corner. I might be reading too much into this, but there's a hand signal from Gabrielle, which could be an indication that the back post wasn't a viable option, despite us maybe wanting to use it again on the outswing at this time. Vieira ended up with a wayward shot and it came to nothing. However, the short delivery was a sign of the adaptation to come. Fast forward to the first corner in the second half, and we tried the back stick one last time, this time with Trossard peeling off and Rice clocking his run, preparing to beat the screen. Everton defended it well, and Zinchenko's shot is deflected wide for another. From then on, we go for the short corners, accepting that the back post isn't working. In a shot of Arteta talking to his staff, I spotted Nicholas Jova, Arsenal's set-piece coach, stood at the edge of his technical area, possibly giving that instruction. When going short, the principles of decoy runs and screens are still there, but they're used a different way. The aim, as far as I see it on the short corners, is to create space at the front of the box to get shots away. Now, Arsenal have Vieira, Erdegaard and Zinchenko positioned on the edge of the box, and as the ball comes to them, after the initial decoy run from Trossard to suck the defenders in a bit, the ball is worked back. You now see White and Saliba screening off the Everton defenders, attempting to get out to Zinchenko, who has another shot from the edge of the box. It doesn't work, but the principles are in place. Arsenal have another go, as that shot came off an Everton player, this time from the left, with Zinchenko and Saka now on the edge of the box. It doesn't quite work out, Saka slips and Zinchenko's shot is blocked. Everton now seem to have worked out where the ball's going from these shorter set pieces. Eventually they ride the wave and we're back into open play. Checkmate. But then, Jesus enters the pitch and we change tact again. This time, we're still going short, still aiming to get to the edge of the box. But now, two of the three players who are going to end up there, White and Trossard in this case, peel away to arrive there, rather than starting there and alerting Everton to our aim. Erdogan makes the wrong call on this one and the ball goes back to Everton, but they don't attack the edge of the box in the same way. And that was their big mistake. The ball goes short again, Trossard and White peel again, Gabriel and Saliba block the Everton players getting out again, and after a neat bit of interplay, Trossard finds the back of the net with an incredible finish. In my opinion, without Trossard being the spare man since the corner in the 59th minute, making those decoy runs, peeling off, being unpredictable essentially, there's no way he's so free in that Everton box as someone would have been tasked to man mark him. The exciting part for me is not really the routines. I mean, they're corner routines. What's exciting is the adaptation in-game. Starting off aiming for the back post, going short, trying the back post again, it's not working. Okay, let's go short, not quite clicking. Let's go short but peel off instead. And finally, something clicks. It requires an incredible amount of coordination and the players, aware the corners have been adapting and improving over the course of the game, knew that played a part. In fact, Zinchenko pointed directly to the bench when Trossard scored, indicating the coaching staff had played a big role in that goal by finding a way to make the corner routines most effective against a resolute Everton defence. Mikel was asked to explain his short corner routines post-game. His response was simple. No. The idea of an important win is kind of anathema to me. I'd ask what competitive game isn't an important win. But what you can have is wins that mean different things. There's important wins for player development, important wins for the culture, important wins for the shape or the story of the season. But this one was important mentally. Beating Everton at Goodison when our record there is so poor is important to get over a mental stumbling block. It will have been playing on the collective mind. But to me, having evidence that changing your approach mid-game can yield results is maybe the most important part of this. Man City can kill you with breathtaking attacking moves. They can score late, they can come out the blocks firing, they can kill the game with passes, they can time waste, they can score from the edge of the box, they can do everything. Last season, isolate Saka and Martinelli, get rid of Saliba, and at times, we were struggling. Also at the end of last season, this graph came out and I found it fascinating. It essentially measures how a team's passing style, going more or less risky essentially, measured by expected pass completion, changed dependent on game state, winning, losing or drawing. As you can see, it didn't really matter. Arsenal didn't really change at all, depending on game state. It's one metric, but it's indicative of a wider issue that Arsenal had last season. We couldn't, or didn't, adapt. Now, we're beginning to see different ways of winning. We evolved our passing mid-game, as we saw. We have a wider squad, with a substitute getting the winner yesterday. And if the set pieces are becoming a big part of that proverbial arsenal, then I say, bring it on. I don't care how we win, I just care that we win. If you like The Different Knock and want to see more, you can access our bonus content on Patreon and YouTube memberships for just £3 a month.